brief intro about what it is. Uh, so the first thing uh, with white balance is you have to think about a white object, like a box or a towel, anything that's nice and white. Um, and, and so if you think about this object, if I, show, if I look at this object in different lighting conditions, so in uh, indoors, under incandescent light, in the outdoors, on a cloudy day versus outdoors on a sunny day, uh, it looks white to me in all those situations. Uh, actually, under these different light conditions, the color of this towel is different. But my brain is compensating for that and making it look white. So essentially, uh, the white balance function of your camera is just an emulation of, uh, of this ability of the human brain uh, to compensate for different lighting conditions. So let's get into the technical details about white balance. Um, and it all starts with the temperature. The white balance temperature is given in degrees Kelvin, and, and basically it's a scale. The lower end of the scale, so the lower the number, um, the cooler or more blue the compensation uh, that is used uh, on your photo. The, uh, the higher the number, the further up on the scale, the warmer or the more yellow or orange compensation is used. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but uh, if you have a warm scene, like something with incandescent light or something that's naturally a bit yellow, you need a cooler white balance to compensate to get the right uh, colors. Uh, if you have a cool scene, like on a cloudy day, for example, um, you need a warmer white balance to compensate. So let's look at an example. Uh, you're shooting your camera with uh, auto, auto white balance, and, and it's looking at a scene uh, of a tree. It's lit up by the sun, so your camera measures it meters it and says the scene is a sunny day, so therefore the white balance will be 5500K. It then takes uh, the raw image and goes to its color compensation library, applies the 5500K to an algorithm, and from that it comes out with a white balanced image compensated for the scene. So now think about taking a picture of a fish underwater. The biggest challenge is the water, which absorbs a lot of the wavelengths of the light, just leaving you with blue and green. Um, and, and so the, the light hitting the fish uh, by the time it reaches the camera, it, it's mostly blue and green. The camera meters this for a white balance, uh, also expecting a flash. But then, of course, the light from your strobes, uh, what's going to come back to your camera depends on how far away you are and how strong the strobes are. So I want to share that example um, to show the technical challenges of getting the white balance right underwater. That's not to say that, that you can't or that a camera won't be able to do a good job, uh, because it can. But it just, uh, it's harder to get a good white balance underwater than on land. So, uh, let's talk about some rules of thumb for, for what to do when you're shooting underwater. So, if you're shooting with strobes, uh, we recommend using the auto white balance. A lot of the time, it will do a pretty good job um, without needing a whole lot of adjustment. Sometimes you will need to, to fix things up in Lightroom. If you're shooting ambient light only, uh, it's recommended to bring a white slate and use a custom white balance. And just a note, uh, built-in underwater white balance settings from camera manufacturers generally don't work too well. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you're interested in learning more about white balance and using it to uh, improve the way your photos look, uh, check out our video about using Lightroom's uh, custom white balance function.